This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. It's life in football. We are life in football. You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast. Check out the new website, lifeinfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeinfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Life in Football podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this is your co-host, Colin Moore. You know we love the life and enjoying football. Today, our very special guest is Patty May O'Hanion. And she's doing her thing right now as the on-campus director of recruiting for why Omen, baby, football, the Cowboys, and she's a player that once was a great softball player, and I guarantee you she can still go out there and do her thing, man. She had 30 some <laughs> home runs at one point in time, and she played for Christopher Newport University. And this is one of the players that I know if my daughter was to play softball, I would want her to kind of, you know, be some similar to because you know I, I I saw a few you know pictures and photos and they had even one of the games on YouTube. Um, she just you know a, a good player, man. She's a person who's a ath- who's an athlete as well, and any former athlete can relate to any current athlete because we know what it takes. We know the drive and the other things that is necessary to succeed and be successful, not just in the sport, but in college life as well. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let Simo bring her on. How you doing, Miss Patty? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. Hey, it's amazing. It's a blessing to have you on. You know, I got to I gotta ask you something now. Only because it just ran across my mind because I kept seeing this on Instagram. So they say the cartoon Doug. Do you know Doug had the girlfriend Patty or he wanted to talk to Patty? Did you ever get to watch that cartoon? <laughs> I have not watched it, but I've had quite a few people make some comments about that. Right, okay, so. okay. Yeah, that had, <laughs> I that, think it, I should. Yeah, yeah, you got to because it, it was when I was growing up, but you 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 a baby because you you just <laughs> not graduated. But yeah, look that up and I just happened to want to it just crossed my <laughs> mind. But you a baller. You had <laughs> You 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 made the program probably they probably crying right now that you left them that you ain't gonna be with them this season. So I know you at Wyoming handling your business in the football department, but before I even get to the football, do the Wyoming softball team know who they have on campus? They know you that valuable to their program that they could really slide you over and you probably could coach and go out there and be like an all-star out there helping them. <laughs> well, Unfortunately, Wyoming doesn't have softball, but oh, if they okay. did, I would love to get involved with them. But yeah, unfortunately, they don't have softball, but I did think about that. So Okay, okay. I, see, I should have researched that before I even threw that out there. But I know <laughs> they would they you you could start your own program recruiting. So how did you actually get into the football world? So it's actually a crazy story. Um my freshman or sophomore year of college, I was working for a triple A baseball team in Norfolk, Virginia, near my hometown, the Norfolk Tides. And I kind of discovered that I really liked working in athletics. Um, but the hard part about working over the summer when baseball is that I was always playing softball. So I tried to find something I could do in the fall and football is in the fall. So I went to our athletic department and I wanted to get involved and believe it or not, my very first football related job was actually pressure washing the stadium at my D3 college over the summer one time. And I did that. And then I went to the coaching staff in the fall and I was like, Hey, you know, I could really, really kind of help you guys out. I'm a good event planner and I'm organized and I'm interested in this. And so I, the last two years of college, I really got involved with the football team and started uh, planning team travel and recruiting events and alumni events. And by the end of my senior year, I was pretty much the DFO and the recruiting uh, on-campus recruiting person. And 
um, I just absolutely loved it. And I knew shortly after I got involved that it's what I wanted to do. Now, see, that's amazing because you took a step forward and asked, you know, the program, hey, do you guys need any help, man? I think that was more of us, you know, an athletic should take into our own hands is kind of going for what, what what we really want, whether it's a building, doing a business, a goal of just having a certain type of job or a certain type of career. Now, with that being said, could you let us know how was it for you growing up? Yeah, uh, for me growing up, it was, um, I played very high level of uh, travel softball. Um, I was traveling around the country to play in tournaments. And I actually, uh, one of the reasons I got into recruiting is I actually was committed to um, the University of Virginia for softball and had a scholarship there. And um, eventually throughout high school, uh, I went through a couple coaching changes and it just didn't really end up working out. It didn't feel right to go to UVA anymore. And so um, I decided to kind of get myself out of that situation. And that's how I ended up playing D3 softball at CNU. So um, softball was very uh, time consuming for me, but my parents were extremely supportive and um, always just allowed me to do whatever I needed to do to get to that next step. And so I had, I had, a, I had a great support system growing up. Now, with you speaking on your parents, I want to hear a little bit more about them. Like, how are they when you was growing up and were they involved in any athletics when they was growing up? So, yeah. So uh, my dad actually was born and raised in Denver, Colorado and ended up playing football at the Naval Academy. So I grew up going to army Navy games and um, tailgating there with them. And it was funny. I'd always play football with all the other little kids and they were mostly all boys and I would be the quarterback and I'd still beat them. It was hilarious. Um, but um, so my dad was a college football player. My mom was very athletic as well, played volleyball in high school. Um, and they met uh, when my dad was at the Naval Academy in, in Annapolis, Maryland. So that's how they met. So when when did all this drive, this motivation, when did you pick that up? Like you went on your own path like, hey, y'all finna let me work in these athletics. I know what I want. <laughs> I'm finna go get it. So when did you have that drive? And then for this softball, I know that's a lot of drive because you saying you had to be dedicated to it and your parents had to, since you liked it, they went in full force with you. So where did that dedication and motivation come from? You know, I think just – my both of my parents worked so hard growing up after my dad graduated he was in the military for over 20 years and my mom was so dedicated to being a good parent to me and my sister um, even while my dad was deployed or working long hours and I think that they just really taught me that I can you can do anything if you just work hard and you ask and the worst that can happen is people say no and I think I just really took that to heart and put myself out there. And I've definitely had quite a few no's, but at the end of the day, I'm very grateful for my, um, my love to just throw myself out there, work hard and whatever I'm doing, I put myself in 110%. You know, you know, what's good about that too, like your drive, your motivation put you in a situation because y'all had coach, he got that drive, he built, um, North Dakota State up, and he coming over. I mean, he building them up too, like working with coach. I mean, so when when I interviewed for this job, I actually, I actually cold applied for this job online. Um, it was on NCAA sports uh, job website, and I was like, you know what, I'll throw myself out there and I'll apply for it. And um, got in contact with our director of recruiting, Ian McGrew. And um, my first kind of interview was with him over the phone. And then my second interview was with Ian and our operations guy, Brent Vernon. And then my third interview was with Coach Bull. And I, it, it was the coolest thing. He actually offered me the job while I was on the phone with him. And I will tell you that I definitely feel like we completely connect with that drive to work hard. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, I went to a D3 college. I played D3 sports. You don't get any money. You get very little gear. It's definitely not the flashy type of athletics experience. And I think that's a similar background to NDSU. Obviously, NDSU is much bigger than my college was, but I definitely 
really admire Coach Bull's ability to work hard and grind and have that drive to just be where his feet are and make whatever program he's at in Wyoming better than what he found it. Now, with that being said, I want to hear a little bit more about the Army and Navy games that you went to with your parents or, you know, because it's, it's almost like a pageantry, like how they would show it on college game day and how they would make the scene to look so, you know, amazing for us, you know, in the NFL stadium and everything. So how is that game? Oh, my gosh. It is the coolest game. I mean, coming from a military family, I love how patriotic it is. And, you know, it's it doesn't matter if you're an Army fan or a Navy fan or you're from Air Force. or. But when you're at that game, I think it just is the essence of, you know, two teams are playing against each other. But at the end of the day, like we're all here to support each other. And um, it's always cold and snowing. So you're bundled up and it's just a really, a really cool atmosphere and a pretty unique atmosphere. And I, I love it. And now, sadly, since I'm working in football, it's harder for me to go to those games. But I hope one day I'll be able to get back to another one. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem with that. I know you're getting to see some big time game right now with Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. Now, my last thing, could you give me any positive motivation to the younger players or athletes out there about trying to, you know, be successful why they're playing their sports at the same time. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think for me the biggest thing would be to find a school that is if you want to play in college, find a school that is the right fit for you. And that's not only football, but it's also the school and it's where it is and it's how far away it is from your family. And at the end of the day, you being happy in a situation that you can look back on 10 years from now and go, that was everything I wanted out of my college experience. That is so much more important than saying that you went to a huge school that you hated. Now, not related to college recruiting, I would say what, what really helped me was being confident in myself. Not that I was good at everything, but that I knew that I was trying my best and that I would do my best to figure it out. And then just jumping in feet first, 110%, because then you can look back and say, even if it didn't work out, I gave it my all. And that's what I like to do. And I think it really has paid off for me here in the last year or so. Well, there it is, man. Y'all heard it from Patty May O'Hanion. And I'm telling you, she's at a top-notch program right now. Wyoming football is a program that has a very nice stadium background with the mountains. And they got some very nice uniforms. And this is a program that is, I think, kind of underrated in my eyes because they have some good football that's played out there. And like I just told you, nice campus, nice stadium, nice uniform. And they play a big-time ball, so what else you want? And she's doing a great job of helping them to be successful. But with that being said, I'm going to leave y'all. I always leave y'all. Keep your head up. And not down, or else you'll fall to the ground. This is the Life and Football Podcast. Catch you next time.